Now we will uh, do with the next another property that is convolution property. Very important and a very easy property. This property says that as usual x of n has an z transform pair x z pair. Convolution means we are going to uh, take two signals and we are going to find the z transform of that two signals and combining them in terms of its product function. Okay. For that let's consider we are having two functions say x1 of n and x2 of n. x1 of n let it have the z transform pair as x1 of z and x2 of n let it have the z transform pair of x2 of z. So according to convolution pair see x1 n convolute x2 n means x1 n convolute x2 n means we are getting the product of their transform functions. We are getting the product multiplication of their transform functions. So we are having two functions where you are convoluting that two functions together. What you will get? You will get the product of their Z transforms. So let us uh, do a very simple e example. See we are given with X of X1 of N and X2 of N. For that we are going to write the Z transform. Let this have, let this be given the Z transform as X1 Z and let this be given the Z transform as X2 Z. So, X1 of Z, we can write it as, as usual, 4 minus 4 Z raised to, this, when if it is nothing is given, you can take this as starting head, that is 0. So, 4 into Z raised to 0 minus 2 into Z raised to 1 plus 1 into Z raised to minus 2. Okay. Now, x2 of z means, see 1 for the value from 0 to 5. First, that is, for we have where we are going to get the value for 0. That is 0 into 1 plus 1 into 1. 1 into z raised to um, 0 plus 1 into z raised to minus 1 for 2 second value. Third value and it goes till Okay, so for 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, the value is 1. For, from 0, see it is equal to is also there in the, uh, along with the uh, uh, limit. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. For these 6 signals, we are having the value 1. So 0 into 1 means um, 0 itself. So you will be getting x1 is a and x2 is a. So according to your convolution property, we have to take the product of this to uh, x1 is a into x2 is a. That is 4 minus this into 1 plus okay. Now as usual you can uh, take the product directly you can take. So, let us uh, start with, uh, first we can start with 4 here. So, 4 into 1, 4, 4 into 1, 4, plus 4 is a raised to minus 1, 4 is a raised to minus 2, 4 is a raised to minus 3, 4 is a raised to minus 4, 4 is a raised to minus 5. Similarly, the others also, other steps also, uh, you can uh, do it. Now with 2 is it? Minus 2 is it inverse, minus 2 is it raised to, is it raised to minus 1 into is it raised to minus 1. So, z raised to minus 2 plus minus 2 z raised to minus 3 and it goes on like that for each term. Next term you are multiplying with that. So, you will get a finally you will obtain a uh, finally you will obtain a uh, series and you can write it as x of you can write you will get a series which you can write it in terms. And you are, you are supposed to get the answer as 4, 2, 3, 3, 3, 3, minus 1, 1.
That is very simple. You can uh, do it yourself and see. We will uh, do with uh, one more uh, example. Given that x of n is equal to 2, 1, 0, 0, 5. And h of n is equal to 2, 2, 1, 1. Now as usual, you can write x of z 2 plus z raised to minus 1 plus 0 z raised to minus 2 plus 0 z raised to minus 3 plus 5 z raised to minus 3. It is uh, 0 0.5. 0 0.5 z raised to minus 3. Okay. Now as usual here also you can write h of z as 2 plus 2 z raised to minus 1 1 into z raised to minus 2 again 1 into z raised to minus 3. Now we are going to write x1 z into x2 z. Here instead of x2 you have taken as h of z. And just you can uh, find the multiplication as usual. You can do it and you can find the term for that. Okay. And you can take the inverse and you can write the term. There is another alternate uh, method is also there that I actually I wanted to show you. See we can uh, write it in the matrix form. Okay. So, 2, 1, 0, 0.5. 2, 1, 0, 0, 0.5. Oh, only we had 1, 0. That is not it. Okay. And another thing, you can write it here. 2, 2, 1, 1. Okay. Now, this is x of n and this is h of n. This is x of n and this is h of n. Now, we are going to multiply the each term. 2 into 2, 4. 2 into 1, 2. 2 into 0, 2. 2 into 0, 5, 1. And again... 2 into 2, 4. 2 into 1, 1. Okay. Again, 1 into 2, 2. 1 into 1, 1. 1 into 0, 1. 1 into 0. 0.5, 1. Again, 1 into 2. 1 into 1, 0, 1. Okay. Now, we are going to draw or we can uh, take diagonal ways. Okay. First element is 4. Second element 4, 2. Third one 2. Okay. And as usual you will get the Series as 4, 4, 4 plus 2, 6, 2 plus 2 plus 0, 4, 2 plus 3 plus 1, 2 plus 1, 3, 3 plus 1, 4, 1 plus 1, 2, 0.5 and 1. Okay. So, that is also very uh, simple. 0.5 and 0.5. So, this is also another alternate method for convolution. Either you can, sometimes it is uh, probable that you are supposed to do two methods. See, you, either you can multiply this two with each term here. 
is it raised to minus 1 with each term here? 0.5 is that raised to minus 3 with each term here and you will get it and you can write the series. Or alternate method x of n you have to write here. y of n or h of n what is the next given x2 whatever it is given you can write here. Just multiply take the diagonal ways and write it as series. This is a very important and very easy method of convolution. That is a very easy one. Okay. Now the next one is the correlation. So convolution is just we will get the product respective uh, the product of the respective is a transform we will get for convolution. Okay. Now the next one is correlation. See what do you mean by correlation? Correlation means there is a relation. Right? That relation or you can say there is some similarity so that you can relate something. If you want to relate something, there should be some similarity. Then only you can relate naturally. So, there is a relation or there is a similarity. Similarity here we are considering about in DSP, we are considering about signals. So, we are saying about the similarity of two signals what we are considering. So, there are two types of correlation. We are having Autocorrelation and also we are having cross correlation. We are having autocorrelation and we are having the cross correlation. See, autocorrelation means the similarity of the signal. Let's say we are having a similar H of U of N and the shifted signal. The similarity of the original, the original signal and the shifted signal, they will have. The similarity among both of this is what we call autocorrelation. That is the similarity of the signal and the shifted version of the same signal. U of n and the same signal we have shifted here. So that this relation between this same signal, that is the original signal and the version um, time shifted signal, uh, that we are considering the same signal. Similarity between these to when they were shifted before shifting and after shifting that is what we call correlation auto correlation In here means you can take u of n and you have you can take h of n so you are having two different signals and now what is the similarity between them that is known as cross cross correlation that is known as cross correlation and the correlation states that as usual if x1 of n gives is a transform as x1 of z and x2 n gives is a as x2 of z then correlation are x1 x2 n this is the method for this is the way how we are representing the correlation R x1 x2 relation R x1 x2 of L sigma we are having two signals right minus infinity to plus infinity x1 n x2 of N minus L correlation X1 is a and X2 of is a inverse. Okay. This is this is the correlation. That is X1 n gives a is a transform as X1 is a X2 n gives a is a transform as X2 is a then the correlation between these two signals x1 n and x2 n is given by r of relation of x1 x2 x1 n same signal is again having a shift will give x1 x2 is a gives x1 is a into x2 of is a inverse here also the main uh, yeah, as in the case of correlation here the cross correlation of signals can also be done 
using the polynomial multiplication and also using inverse transforming of signals. Both the methods like convolution. Here also cross correlation can also be you can use either polynomial multiplication or you can use inverse transforming of the result. And actually the convolution is equivalent to the cross correlation of the waveforms in which the original sequence has been time reversed. That is what we have written x1 of n and x2 of n minus 1. They have been time reversed and which is having a normalizing factor which is said to be 1 or it is said to be unity. So both correlation and co uh, convolution they can be you can, they can be done by the same computer or the software program and uh, by reversing one of the sequences. See here also if you are given a series uh, uh, for example say x1 of n is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay. And you are again series uh, and the uh, series say x2 n is equal to let it be 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay. Now we are going to take as usual whatever we have done for uh, convolution. Here we are going to write x of z is equal to 1 plus 2 z raised to minus 1. Okay. Plus 3 z raised to minus 2. Plus 4 z raised to minus 3. Here also you can write 4. If a sender is uh, not given, you can directly take first one as the 1 into z raised to minus 3. Okay. Now what we can do, you can just, you can uh, multiply with that. Uh, now one more thing you have to do is, see when you are uh, applying is a, uh, co correlation here, you are multiplying the transform as x1 of z into x2 of z inverse we are uh, taking. As convolution, we are just multiplying both the transforms x1 z into x2 z. But here, when you are correlating x1 z into x2 of z minus 1. So, what you have to do? Here, you have to take the x2 inverse. So, plus 3 plus 2 z raised to. Okay, you are uh, taking the inverse again. 4 is set. 4 plus, we are just going to take the inverse. So, 4 uh, plus 3 is set plus z raised to minus 2 plus z raised to minus 3. We have just taken as such the inverse, that's all. Now you can correlate, that is, you can multiply x1 is a x2 of z inverse. Then you are multiplying just polynomial. Either I just you can do the polynomial multiplication and you can write the series as such. Okay. This is the uh, correlation. Now we are very simple sum of the very simple proper uh, theorems we are having. That is, we are having the initial uh, value theorem, final value theorem. See, for the initial value theorem, we are saying, see, we are having a casual signal, say f of n, we are having a x of n, we are having a casual series. So we are saying that initially means we are going to uh, set it as, we are going to set the value for 0. Initially means we are going to set the value for 0 and finally means we are going to set the value for infinity. Only that is the difference. So for the initial value theorem, if, f, if x of n is a casual sequence, then x of 0 is equal to Limit n tends to 0 x of n. That will give you the z transform per x of z. Where uh, the z transform will tend to infinity. Okay. For example, you are given a sequence say 2 by 
z square plus z by 6 by 1 by 6. See, for the we have you have to solve this by initial value problem. So, initial value problem means what is the thing? We have to set the value say 0. That is what we are saying about the initial value problem. So, for the initial value problem, we have to set the value as 0 at the start of the function. At the start of the function. So, when you are going to set 0 or we are going to uh, uh, set 0 and we have to replace every z by infinity. Then, the answer will be also infinite. Right? When you are set n is equal to 0, what will happen when n is equal to 0 here? The z transform will tend naturally to what? Infinity. So, you can write it as x of 0 is equal to limit. As usual, you are writing your and what is the that is limit that is equal to limit z tends to infinity 2 by z square plus 1. This is equal to 2 upon z square infinity z infinity z by 6 is infinity and again we are having infinity plus infinity minus 1 by 6 means that is also infinity that is we are getting the 0. So initial value of x of 0 is 0. Initial value of this function was x of 0 is 0. Nothing is there that is we are going to choose a casual sequence and we are saying that According to Z transform property we are writing. That is as Z tends to infinity. This is the fact. That is Z tends to infinity. Z raised to minus and will tend to 0. That is the all the terms that except the first one will approach to 0. That is the initial value problem. And in the case of the final value problem that is X of Z. That is uh, then the force of X of Z will be Poles of this x of z that will be actually inside all the units of them. And the final sequence is as usual I have told it will be x of infinity. It will be x of infinity. That is the final value here. This is the initial value theorem. At the start of the function we will assume it to be 0. But in the case of the final value theorem we will take limit n tends to infinity x of infinity is equal to limit z tends to 1 x of 1 by 1 minus z x of z. If x of infinity exists. For uh, if you are considering the previous problem itself see if x of infinity we are having a function say limit z tends to 1 let it be z minus 1 into x of z. x of z into 